Hello, I'm Dr. Sophie Lund Rasmussen, or Dr. Hedgehog, and I'm going to present a study which my colleagues and I just recently published. It's called Anyone Can Get Old, All You Have to Do Is Live Long Enough, Understanding Mortality and Life Expectancy in European Hedgehogs. And this was the study where we discovered the world's oldest hedgehog of 16 years of age. So this is the study I was going to tell you about. And I published it together with my colleagues, Thomas Bjørnebo Bell, Helle Jacobe Martens and Owen R. Jones. It's open access available online on this uh, address. So the background for this study is the Danish Hedgehog Project, which I'm leading. Originally, it was my PhD project lasting from 2016 to 2019. I basically decided to use dead hedgehogs to understand the living, to improve the conservation of this declining population of hedgehogs in the wild. I used citizen science, so I asked Danish volunteers to collect dead hedgehogs from all over Denmark back in 2016. And I made collaboration with a range of specialist research groups at different uh, universities in Denmark to do a lot of different uh, examinations and studies on these dead hedgehogs. The collection was based on 26 collection stations situated all over Denmark. And the collection took place from May to December 2016. And I basically asked people to collect the dead hedgehogs and take them to one of these collection stations, uh, basically just uh, bins where they could leave the hedgehogs and leave a small note saying where they found the hedgehog and which state they found the hedgehog. I did a massive media outreach to, to reach out to people to get them to interact with this project and uh, contribute. Uh, and we had at least 200 features in the Danish media about this, just for outreach purposes to get people involved. And it really paid off. Over 400 volunteers collected 697 dead hedgehogs from all over Denmark for my study. Here you can see where the different hedgehogs were located. It was a really good representation of Denmark. We necropsied all these almost 700 hedgehogs and they took up the space of 14 of these freezers, as you can see. Many of the hedgehogs were roadkills, which means that they were basically completely flat, uh, having no uh, internal organs left. And in that case, we took out one sample from this flat individual uh, to do genetics. And then we also had the data on the location of the hedgehog and the date of the find and the sex, if we were still able to determine it. But in the intact hedgehogs, we could take up to th uh, 23 samples. Uh, and we also had the data on the location, uh, the date of the find and the sex of the hedgehog. I decided to use these dead hedgehogs to determine their age. We did a lot of other studies on these hedgehogs to describe their general health and the challenges they face in the wild so that we can improve the conservation of this species. But one study was to determine the age of the hedgehog. And this is done by counting periosteal growth lines in the transverse sections of the mandibles, the jaw bones. So it's like counting the ear rings in a tree because the hedgehog jawbones show growth lines, otherwise known as lines of arrested growth, actually, because the calcium metabolism slows down when they hibernate over winter. So every time a hedgehog hibernates, a line will form in the jawbone. It was a huge task to prepare all these hedgehog jawbones uh, for age determination. And we had jawbones from 388 individuals uh, for this study, because as I mentioned earlier, many of the individuals were roadkills and they didn't have intact jawbones for us to use. But 
almost 400 hedgehogs. It was still a huge task. You can see all the little cups with jaw bones in them uh, being prepared uh, for uh, age determination. So we had to soften the bones and then we cut the, the jaw bones into micro thin slices in a cryostat uh, like the picture below here. Uh, and then afterwards we, we dyed uh, all these uh, jawbone sections uh, with the purple dye to make the growth lines stand out so that we could uh, watch the growth lines and count them uh, in a microscope. And then it was basically counting the lines of arrested growth or growth lines in the jawbones of these 388 dead hedgehogs. And here's an overview with the age examples. So you can see that each line represents a year, a hibernation event, you could say so. Um, and we found some really old individuals, individuals of 11 years, 13 years, and 16 years of age. And here you can see the different growth lines in the jawbone sections. That was an amazing find because previously, previous studies had shown that hedgehogs could reach the age of nine if they were really fortunate. And I should also mention here that these were only single individuals, of course. So one male individual reaching 16 years of age. So this study found that the mean age of the hedgehogs uh, was 1.8 years. 1.6 years for females and 2.1 for males. And we use the data set to construct uh, life tables. And in those uh, calculations, we found that life expectancy was 2.1 years for females and 2.6 years for males. We also prepared empirical survivorship code, uh, curves showing that the risk of death was constant with age for males, but increased with the age uh, for females. And we found that males, male hedgehogs appear to live longer than females. This is probably because they're non-territorial, so there, there will be less fighting going on between the males. They can still fight each other, especially during the mating season where they fight over females. But compared to other species of mammals where females tend to live longer than males, uh, the, the hedgehogs are, are not fighting as much. And then there's the issue of females raising the hoglets alone. So it's basically perhaps just easier being a male hedgehog than a female hedgehog, which may explain the, re uh, the, the reason why uh, males live longer than females in the hedgehog world. So this is an overview of uh, the different age classes we found. And the interesting thing is that the majority of samples were from individuals below two years of age. So we had 109 individuals of only one year, uh, zero years, and 115 individuals of one year of age. So the majority of individuals were actually quite young. We also had data on the cause of death of these individuals. And we found that the road killed individuals um, were primarily killed during July. Uh, that goes for both the males and the females. And this is the peak of the mating seasons for hedgehogs in Denmark. So it makes perfect sense because during the mating season, the hedgehogs will uh, expand their home ranges. They will walk long distances at night uh, in their search for mates, especially the males. We also found that the male hedgehogs were more, more frequently killed in traffic than the females. And even though the distribution of dead hedgehogs in our sample was 50-50 between urban and rural areas, we found that two-thirds of the road kills happened in rural areas. This could, could be due to the fact that hedgehogs tend to cross um, roads with less traffic. So perhaps they are more inclined to, to cross roads in rural areas. It could also be explained by the fact that the, there could be a sampling bias, basically because it's easier for the volunteers to get out of the car and pick up a dead hedgehog on a road that's not very full of traffic. 
It could also be due to the fact that scavengers it tend to be around more in urban areas compared to rural areas, so that uh, the individuals being killed on roads in the rural areas would last longer, you could say, on the roads uh, compared to the urban areas. We found that females most often died in the month of September in Denmark, and this could be explained by the fact that this is the month where she's still lactating, she's still taking care of the young, at, at least in the first half of the month, and afterwards she's probably very exhausted, uh, the female, so Perhaps it's during the period of lactation and where she takes care of the young, where she has to go out and, and forage more because it's really energy demanding to, to raise the hocklets. But it could also be uh, that she is just really, really exhausted and more prone to, to disease uh, after taking care of the young. We had previously done a genetic study on the same individuals from the Danish Hedgehog Project. And we found that the Danish Hedgehogs in general have a very low gen genetic diversity, which basically means that they're inbred. We measured observed individual heterozygosity in 151 of these aged hedgehogs. And this allowed us uh, to do an analysis on the effects of inbreeding uh, on uh, age in hedgehogs. And our analysis showed that the degree of inbreeding did not influence the longevity of the hedgehogs. So it appears that if the hedgehogs managed to survive into adulthood, despite the high degree of inbreeding, which may cause several potentially lethal or hereditary conditions, the inbreeding does not reduce their longevity. And that's really interesting because we don't have a lot of data on the effects of inbreeding in wildlife. We all know that inbreeding can cause serious problems, but in this data set, at least, it seemed that inbreeding did not affect uh, the life expectancy of hedgehogs. We also found that the degree of inbreeding did not affect the cause of death because we had individuals dying in traffic, individuals dying in care, and individuals dying from other causes in the wild. But degree of inbreeding did not uh, play a role in that either. So when interpreting the results of our age determination analysis, we have to keep in mind that lines of arrested growth or these growth lines may appear during very stressful periods for the hedgehogs. So during sickness and lack of nutrition. So could some of the growth lines actually be from periods where the hedgehogs were not hibernating? Would a hedgehog going through a very rough period uh, uh, grow more uh, growth lines, uh, indicating that the individual was actually older than it really was? The problem is we don't have any data on this. We don't know how often this occurs, but we just have to keep it in mind when we interpret the results. And what happens if the hedgehogs uh, do not hibernate, for example, as they do in some areas or, or they don't do in some areas of uh, New Zealand, for example, because then they're not likely to form these growth lines. I would say that in Denmark, the winters are pretty cold. So we expect all our hedgehogs in Denmark to hibernate. But what happens if a hedgehog wakes up from hibernation and remains active for a longer period of time and then goes back into hibernation again? Will, then, will it then form two lines during that winter? So we had a very conservative approach when uh, we, um, we counted the growth lines. Uh, first of all, we were two people counting them, and then we would compare results. And if we didn't agree on the results, we would ask a third person uh, to count the lines again and discuss um, what we found. And if we saw a growth line that wasn't very thick or was in in somehow in in some way uh, skewed or or uh, or wasn't fully grown, um, we decided to leave that out. So we did, a, we had a very conservative approach. So, but we just have to keep it in mind that there are factors influencing these growth lines. 
And then we concluded from this study that future work could use our results alongside additional data on age-specific reproductive output to construct uh, matrix population models that could be used for more robust modeling of the European hedgehog populations to, to basically monitor the populations and see whether they're declining or increasing. Because right now the European hedgehog is in decline all over Europe. So it's really important that uh, we discover what causes these um, incidents of decline and what we can do to stop them. But it's also really important that we monitor the populations all the time. So this could be a tool for future population monitoring. So just to sum up, the highlights of this study um, were that we found the world's oldest scientifically confirmed European hedgehog, which likely lived to the age of 16 years. The mean age at death in the data set of these 388 individuals was 1.8 years. So just below two years of age. And this at least means that they may participate in one to perhaps two mating seasons before they die. So even though the mean age was pretty low at two years, um, they still have the potential to uh, reproduce before they die. So that's good for the population at least. Males live longer than females in the hedgehog world, at least in our sample set. And inbreeding did not seem to affect longevity in the hedgehogs. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you want to follow my research, I have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and this YouTube channel, and the ResearchGate profile where all my publications are available open access. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you for listening.